Welcome poker fans to PokerFraudAlert.com and the heads up match between me and Yebsite. 2,000 chips, we're playing 2040 Limit Hold'em and whoever busts first is the loser. So this is a heads up grudge match. It takes place on May 13th, 2012 and we're going to play our first hand right here. You're going to hear my commentary on every hand and see my whole cards in every hand. And Yebsite claims he's recording his as well, so maybe we'll get to see his perspective. So, here we go. And I was dealt Jack-9 off-suit to start the whole thing off. A pretty good hand to have on the button. And he's 3-betting me. I don't want to 4-bet here, because this hand doesn't have much showdown value. I did flop middle pair. I'm just going to go ahead and raise him right here. And uh, define my hand now. Now, he's 3-betting me, so this could already be trouble unless I improve. He could have a draw. It's a very draw-heavy board. He could have a spade draw, a straight draw. He could have both. So I've got to call it down for sure. And uh, good thing is he probably did not make a draw. I'm going to just call down here. And uh, he hits the miracle on the turn with the pocket fives. Wow. So I was right to call him down. The problem was the uh, <laughs> result did not end up the way I wanted. So he's going to fold to my king-10, which I would have 3-bet had he raised on the button. And he's off to an early lead thanks to that 2-outer on the turn. Now I'm going to drop the 7-deuce off suit. Don't want to play any trash like that on the button or really anywhere. Um, you can play some trash heads up, but the worst hands heads up I don't like playing. King-10 off suit again. I'm going to 3-bet this one because he raised on the button. He's going to just call, and the flop will come down rags, rainbow board, 7-6 deuce. Now, he just called, showing he probably missed, so I'm just going to bet, and we'll see. If he calls the turn, I'm going to check call the river. Now, he folded. He probably had something like jack-9 or something like that, over cards that uh, didn't really have anywhere to go. Maybe even worse than that. 10-5, I'm going to drop that as well. So I'm still a little bit behind. 2130 to 1870, thanks to that first hand. Ace 10 off suit, that's a definite re raise hand, but he folded to me. So, so far, Yepside's playing fairly tight. He may have seen me fold a few hands on the button and decided that uh, he's also going to stick to decent hands. Sometimes, when you fold too much pre flop, that will influence your opponent to do so too. Even if I'm not really folding too much, if it appears I am, it may actually make him play tighter. Uh, he folded that flop where I flopped an ace with all spades. Not that sad to see the fold there because uh, there's a lot of ways I could have been beat later on in the hand. 8-3 offsuit. He's just going to limp on the button, which I don't ever advise anyone to do. But uh, I'm glad he's doing it. It gives me a chance to catch something here. I did not catch something, but I'm going to bet thinking that he probably missed this, and he folded. So that was one of those things. When you play against someone who is making a mistake, like limping on the button, uh, that usually means they have trash, and you got a high board like that, it's good to bet out and just make them fold. Raising pocket six is obviously on the button. That's a no-brainer. And Yebsite wants a beer, so I guess we're going to have a break after this hand do a little bit of commentary there in uh, between here. Queen, deuce, deuce, ten is the board with three hearts. I'm actually going to check behind. I smell some kind of trap here. And wow, I hit the full house. So I'm hoping he has something big like a deuce or maybe even a flush. And there's my two outer. I don't know if I... Uh, nope, he didn't have anything. Should have bet the turn, but... Uh, I was a little bit afraid of getting check raised there. So we're going to have one minute while Yebsite runs to get a beer. I've pulled back above even to 2040, and he has 1960. There is no rake in this game. Uh, the king five that he called on that very dry board of queen, deuce, deuce is indicative that he is going to be calling trash on the flop. Now, that's not as bad as you might think, because some people like to do that knowing that there's a good chance their opponent does not have them beat and has completely missed as well. And also that even if they have something like what I had, a pocket pair, that they can still catch it and beat them. Now, I would never call king five there, 
But uh, there are some actually good players that do that. So I have to be mindful that if I bet a flop like that, queen, deuce, deuce with two hearts, I might get calls from Yep site with total trash hands, which is going to make me have to bet the turn more often. So this, it makes it a little bit harder to play in one way, in that you can't check behind as often, because uh, it's harder to tell the difference between a trap and someone who's just chasing with absolute garbage. In the long run, it actually helps me, because that means they are chasing with absolute garbage and are wasting bets that way. But uh, it does add another element to my decisions as to uh, what I'm going to do. So waiting still for Yevsite to come back. If he doesn't come back soon, I will pause the video and get it going again. I don't want to have it sit here for too long without any play. If you want some entertainment, you can watch the chat that's going on in the little box. And the website has returned, so we're going to move along here. And I got 6-9 off suit, which I'm going to dump on the button. A lot of trash showing up on the button for me. And uh, it turned out he had worse trash. So now I will be on the big blind. I've actually had pretty good hands in the big blind. I don't think I've had to fold any, but this will be the first one. Queen deuce offsuit is something I will play on the button every time, but in the big blind to a raise, I don't like playing it. That just does not play well heads up. It's uh, dominated too often. Queen seven offsuit, easy raise on the button. And he calls. Flop is queen high, rainbow. So if he check raises me here, yeah, I was actually going to tell you, if he check raised me here, I was going to raise him on the turn. Because I believed I had the best hand. I believed I had the best hand because he didn't three bet me pre-flop, so I didn't think he had better than queen seven pre-flop. Letting go of my five deuce off suit here, and uh, so far the match pretty even, twenty thirty to nineteen seventy. We're going to be here all day if this uh, doesn't move anywhere. Dropping ten deuce off suit. There's a lot of trash coming in. King queen suited. He definitely would have re-raised that. So. Made a good fold there, probably, unless I would have flopped something. A jack six suited. This is one I'm just going to call average type hand. And uh, I hit the jack here. I'm going to let him fire at it. If he's bluffing, that's the one card I didn't want to see. Well, queen or king, because that uh, further worsens my hand. Now I just have to call down. He has shown that he bluffs here. So we will see. He checks, and his ace is good. Going back to the button. Three deuce offsuit. Just a lot of bad hands on the button. And this happens sometimes when you play heads up. You just get a whole lot of hands that are really lousy. So, yep, sight slightly ahead at the moment. Nine six offsuit. I'm going to drop that as well. I tell the observers that I'm getting a lot of trash, and I'm not just being a nit, because we do have some spectators here, and I don't want them to think that I'm playing this like a high-stakes match, and I'm afraid to get my money in. Flop is totally missed for me. Jack 6-4 rainbow. Good news is it might be missing him as well. He's going to check call. Now, this is one of those spots, do I still bet the turn? I think I do, because I think he would have raised the flop had he flopped a piece of anything. Yeah, so that's one case where you just say, I'm going to keep betting here because he's not showing he has anything. If you think your opponent would have check-raised the flop and didn't, and there wasn't much he could slow play, you just uh, let it go. King deuce, I'm going to drop. A lot of people don't want to ever drop a king in this game pre-flop. I don't like playing the king trash. Ace trash, I'll play, but king trash, I don't like doing that. Uh, Jack three of clubs, and he's going to fold, so... Fairly tight game so far. The crowd getting a little bit restless that we're not going anywhere, but you know, I've played 2040 Limit Hold'em before, and it does get going. You can easily win or lose $2,000 in this game, so you just have to... Uh, someone has to get on a run here, and so far we haven't had that. So... Now he's folding. Now this is really going to take forever. And I have 6-4 of spades. 
And I've flopped a big draw here, as you can see, a straight flush draw. So this one I'm going to check raise the flop. Now at the he's three betting. At the moment, I don't want to four bet because this hand has no showdown value, and it's not quite a favorite against most hands. Now I'm really in trouble. And I think I'm going to have to fold. So I had 6-4 of spades there. That was an unusual situation where most of my outs got ruined. I had outs probably only to a 6 and to that uh, straight flush, that one out with a straight flush. So not very good. Uh, went from a great flop to a really lousy turn. So got flop 2 pair here, ace, 9, king. Bad news is he probably didn't hit it as I thought. When they just call pre-flop and you get a board like ace, king, 9, they probably missed it because uh, it's a pretty high board. They probably would have 3-bet pre-flop if they had any of that. And uh, So you can be happy you flop something, but then you know that they probably missed and you're not going to get any money. My ace-jack high wins this one. I'm happy to see that since uh, that board easily could have hit him just flatting pre-flop. King-4 offsuit. I'm going to raise. And he's going to fold. So it's uh, 1970 I have at the moment. The upside's 2030. Very even match so far. And 5-4 suited. The flop, I will flop bottom pair. So I'm going to check raise that. He's going to 3-bet me, and it's time to just call down unless I improve. The 3 probably does not matter. I'm just going to check call, and I'm going to check call the river. And I hit it, so now I'm going to check raise him. And he checks. And he had nothing. Turned out I was right to call him down. And this is why you can't let go of bottom pair, because the, there's a lot of things that your opponent could be doing where they have some kind of draw or doing some kind of bluff or buying free cards with ace high. So you basically have to call down bottom pair heads up in most cases unless the board is really bad. So that was my first win, I think, on the river on a really contested pot. Now he's check calling down. I'm going to try to force him off this one again. And he got me here. This one, he may have, there's a lot of things he could have done there. Could have made the straight, could have made a two pair, could have flopped something big like Jack Deuce and waited to the turn, but at least there was no decision of having to fold. It was very easy because I had nothing. 7-8 off suit, I completely missed this flop, just going to dump it. So... Back to about even. No one really taking over here. I'm dropping the 3 do suited. I hate 3 do suited. I think it's a terrible hand for many reasons, especially because the, when you make a pair with it, no matter what, it's often not going to win. So he limped on the button. This is another case where maybe I can steal it. And he's going to call, meaning he probably has something. So I'm going to do a check raise here with the jack. And now I'm going to bet. And indeed, he had bottom pair. I was hoping he would bet, and I would check raise him. I didn't put him on the queen there. So che I blew the check raise. I lost out on uh, 40 chips from not check raising, but I thought he might bet there and think I was bluffing or had a draw but he was smart and checked behind. So that's one of those cases where you actually check raise the turn with bottom pair, thinking you still, or not bottom pair, second pair, thinking you have the best hand. Queen do suited, I will call it because it's suited. And I flop the bottom pair here, which is kind of bottom pair with two pair. And he's check, he's three betting me, so I'm not sure if I believe the three bet. But uh, that's what I was afraid of. And he's checking behind. Pretty sure I got this one. I do. So he was uh, three betting with ace high. I didn't think he had a six, but a little bit of afraid, a little afraid that he had uh, either something like a higher pocket pair, better deuce. So that was one where I didn't three bet. I considered it, but I didn't. So he 
check fold of that one. Happy to see that since I needed the gut shot to win. And I've taken a little bit of a lead finally. Ace Jack off suit is my hand. And a three bet him here. We have not gone four bets yet pre flop until now. I'm just going to call here. He's not four bet yet, so that shows so far he's been a tight four better. So you don't want to five bet that, especially out of position, unless the guy is a maniac, which so far Yebsite has not been. I'm going to check raise the ace jack with top pair. If he does have queens, kings, or aces, I'm in trouble. And here we go. Now that king's not good. I'm still going to have to bet, but he may raise me. He does not raise me. I'm in pretty good shape here. Yebsite thinking. He may have ace-queen, he may have eights, fives, or he could have some junk. We'll see what he had. He had king-five, so he actually hit the turn. Wow. So he four-bet with king-five and gets lucky on the turn. And I'm going to dump that trash there. So It's hands like that where I would type site equals joke on poker stars. But here, my own site equals joke. Once again, we are playing on the PokerFraudAlert.com No Fraud Online Poker Room. This is, of course, for play money, but it's a little heads-up grudge match. Yep, so I challenged me, so I accepted the challenge. He will get a little prize if uh, he wins this. So, back to even. Especially since I'm going to fold this exactly even. Had he not picked up the king on the turn, I would have made some headway in this match. I'd be substantially ahead. He'd by no means be in trouble yet, but we'd actually have some movement here. Instead, we're back to even. But that's the game. So here was an interesting hand. I have 9-8, middle pair, and the club draw. Now, I don't want to see the club hit, because it's very possible he's chasing a bigger club. I'd rather it just stays the way it is. And that's what I don't want to see. Now, he's thinking and firing out. That's bad, because that meant he might be thinking of check-raising me. Of course, I have to just call. And he had nothing. So he was thinking, do I bluff him here? And that's not a good bluff to make, because if the opponent seems to have something, of course he's calling you with a club. And if he's got a pair, he's going to begrudgingly call you. So Yepsite should not have bluffed there, because it was likely I either had a club or a pair I wasn't going to fold anyway. That's a, a move that only works in no limit, really. And the only other way it would work is if I somehow completely missed. Had no pair, had no club. But that wasn't likely the way that hand went down. So he wasted 40 chips there. So when you make bluffs, you got to think, what's the chance my opponent's going to fold? And if the chance is about zero, you don't do it. Here I'm going to 4-bet with Ace-Queen. It's the best hand I've been dealt here. Actually, that's not true. I've had some pairs, which are technically better than Ace-Queen. But I flop the Ace, and I'm in very good shape. Yep, so I check calling here. And that may have made a draw for him, but I don't have any reason to believe that he has made something. But if he check raises it, I will just call down. The River makes a whole lot of things possible, but I'm going to value bet anyway. He check calls. He has pocket five, so actually started out ahead pre-flop, and this time no set on the turn for Yebsite. And I'm ahead, about 2,300 to 1,700. Apparently people in the chat room are actually making side bets. I haven't really followed the action, but I think that's what they're talking about with those numbers. 9-7, off suit. I raise, he calls, I have flop bottom pair, but obviously that's not my favorite board for bottom pair, and very happy to see a fold there. If he did check raise me, I would call him down unless it got really bad. If like a jack or a 10 showed up on the turn, I would let it go. I'm going to call the 5-7 off suit, and I completely missed this one. I'm going to give up and let him have it. You don't have to feel like you have to outplay your opponent on every pot. There's no shame in just check folding when you totally miss, especially against the guy who will sometimes make moves like Gibbsite does. 
Jack Deuce, he three bet me pre flop. If I don't hit this, I am folding. And I'm folding. Complete miss. Nowhere to go with that hand at all. The upside's starting to make a little bit of headway back. We'll fold if he raises this. I will do that. So, 10 8 off suit. Okay, hand to have on the button. I have flopped a gut shot draw, but that's it. He's going to check call the turn, or check call the flop. I'm going to check behind on the turn, and I will let it go if I don't hit something. It is possible he had something like 8 9. I could have beaten him, but most things I probably couldn't beat. So he's just limping on the button here. And I have flopped a straight draw, open-ended straight draw. And we're going to fire out here and see if he folds. The upside saying in the chat he predicts this will go on for three more hours. I hope not. So he's raising me in the on the flop, so I'm just going to check down and see if I can get something. If the deuce hits, I will just bet out. Unfortunately, I, I'm not even going to try to bluff at this. I think he's going to call. I think he probably would have called King High. So that wasn't even a bad non-bluff. So he had a draw as well. Would have been fortunate if we hit a deuce for me. Then I would have gotten a lot of money out of him. Because I would have had a better straight. He's three betting pre-flop. And I've flopped a backdoor flush and bottom open-ended straight draw. Just call down here. And that is a bad card. I'm going to have to fold. So really have not gotten anywhere in this match with a very good ace-king suited now on the big blind. And let's see if the flop will help me. No. Still think I have the best hand. Deuce I don't think is going to matter much. And he's going to fold. So this is one of these times you just close your eyes and keep betting. Because you don't want to give him a free card there, and you think you probably have the best hand. So this is heads up, and most times they miss. And, of course, there are outs unless he has an 8. Sometimes you have to treat ace-king unimproved as a pair in heads up. King 4 off, I'm just... Uh, calling it pre-flop and missing. So the problem is, so far, I have not really gotten any big hands against him that have gone to showdown. So I have not won many big pots, and the biggest pot actually went to him, where he spiked that king in the turn. And he's check-calling after I flopped a gutshot draw. I'm just going to check behind. I would like to do the free card here. I've completely missed, and if he bet, I was considering calling, but I'm just going to check, and I guess he was trying to induce a bluff. The reason I would consider calling queen high there is because there's a lot of draws that could have missed there for him, where queen 10 high would have been the best. Queen jack offsuit, three betting pre-flop, totally missed this board, but I will fire the flop and turn. If he raises me, I'm folding. Now I have to check fold, because for sure now he has me beat 3, 4, 5, 6, and a king on the board. And I've fallen behind now. 21.30 to 18.70. So I folded a pocket deuces. He's claiming he bluffed me on that one, but I don't think he realized what I had. I don't know if the bluff that he was talking about actually still couldn't beat Queen Jack. But with 3, 4, 5, 6 on the board and a king, what he's calling the whole way, obviously Queen Jack is not something you can call on the river. Pretty even match so far. Let go of the ten six.
We are playing until someone busts. So far, it's not looking like anyone's going to bust anytime soon. And I'm just going to check behind, hoping for the Miracle 2. I will not get it, and I will fold. Pretty cold deck for me so far in this match. And it is 5-4 offsuit. The upside making a little bit of headway. He has the most chips he's had so far against me. I think so. But I did just fold to aces, so maybe things are turning around. And he has 3-bet me. I've only got Jack Deuce off suit. I'm going to have to call the flop, because uh, a 3 will help me here, and a Jack might as well. Even a 2 might. Here's a Jack. So now I'm actually going to raise him if he bets, but since he's checking, I'm betting. He's going to call. It's not my favorite card. I wanted to see anything under a jack or jack itself. I obviously have to call this. And the upside was bluffing me. And the three is not what I wanted. I thought that was the card I wanted to see. It turned out I didn't want the three. Got 10-8 suited. This is one of those times you three bet with a hand that's not a premium hand because there's a lot you can do with it. And I flop middle pair. So you don't always just 3-bet the big cards and the pairs. I know you haven't seen a lot of that out of me yet, just because of what's been dealt to me. But the hands that are very flexible, there's a lot you can do with. Kind of middle suited cards. Uh, you sometimes do 3-bet that for deception, and because there's a lot, a lot of places to go with them. Here's an ace. Now this is one of those rare spots where I'm not going to raise. Because if he's got worse, he's probably folding. And this may induce a call out of him, thinking I have a draw, but no. The problem with raising the ace there is if he has a better ace, he has you beat. And if he has worse, he's probably folding. Unless he's got one of those other pairs. But if he's got, like, king-10, he's probably folding. So better just let him fire into you. And there wasn't a lot he could make on that board draw-wise, especially with 3-betting pre-flop. He's raising me here. I 3-bet the Jack-9 suited pre. He's now raising this board, which is very draw-heavy. I will give it a call. Now that's bad, since this now may make the situation where I'm drawing dead. I will fold, and I'm back to even. It's a case where he could have had a worse hand than me with a draw like 7-8, but no point to hope for that and call down. If you can only think of a few hands that you can beat, you're better off folding. So he's check-raising me here. I've got ace high. Obviously, that's not my favorite card in the turn, because it made a lot of draws, so it does give me some possible outs if he doesn't have a flush already. And here's the river. Considering folding, but he has been bluffing a lot. Only got ace high. The problem is every draw I can think of has gotten there. I'm going to let it go. I was trying to picture what draw I could have, but, you know, 9, 10, 8, 9, any pair, all those things I can't beat. Spades. So that was one of those cases I just couldn't come up with something he would have done that with that I could beat. So even though ace high you usually call down in Limit Hold'em, heads up. Couldn't do it. Did pick up a straight draw on the turn. I would have called any pair on the river. I would have actually raised a straight. Right now I've got middle pair. He's raising the turn, which is not a good sign. I'm going to have to call this down, though. He may have picked up a diamond draw. I have a feeling I'm losing this one, but Obviously, you have to call this. And that's exactly what happened. He had a draw and missed it. So this is why you have to call down pairs in those spots, even though it's scary to do sometimes. It's scary to do when there's a bad board, and then the river made it look even worse, because he could have had an ace-high flush draw. He could have just had ace-high and done that and then gotten there. 
But uh, if you can look at it and see that there are several things you would have done that with and then missed, such as a diamond draw, spade draw, then you just have to call. And if it turns out they had you, they had you. But sometimes you'll see hands like that, and you'll be very happy you did not fold. The staggering losses occur in Limit Hold'em Heads Up when you have a lot of hands like that in a row where they do actually have it, and you do have to call them down, and just over and over they show you something. Or they bad beat you over and over, and all of a sudden uh, you lose money at a rapid-fire pace. So far that has not happened to either of us in this match. We're kind of going back and forth here. Flop King 5-5 five, five with two sp hearts, so I'm going to call it down with Ace High. He could easily have a heart draw. He could easily have nothing. He could easily have something, too. He had nothing. He didn't even have a draw. So he obviously was stabbing at it, thinking that I probably didn't have much there. But I don't agree with that move, because it's too likely I could have ace high when I'm three betting preflop. It doesn't always mean I have ace high or a pair, but I could. There's too good of a chance of it. It's not worth bluffing in that spot. But at least he didn't bluff the river. I'll give him credit for that, because I was calling for sure. Ace high on a board, five deuce deuce. Just going to call this one down with ace high. Now the kicker doesn't matter. I'm going to call down. And he only had king high. I considered raising the turn, but I didn't want to deal with a three bet, because I only had an eight high spade draw. So if I call this three bet, then what am I hoping for? I make the spade? Well, he may have a spade better than an eight. So it's one of those spots you just say, I'm not giving up the hand, but I, I don't want to make a huge pot out of it. So Yepstay doing a lot of bluffing here, and so far has bluffed away some chips that he didn't have to. King 7 off suit on a completely missed board. Yepside not doing much folding, as you've seen. He's not check folding at all, and that's why it kind of hurts to have to fold king high against a player like that who's playing in kind of... He went from being conservative to kind of a maniac mode, but there's just nowhere to go with that hand. Ace-jack, whatever, with king seven. So what I'm hoping here is he'll just remain aggressive like this, and then I'll get some hands and he'll hang himself. Or even just a succession of hands where he tries to bluff me and it doesn't work. So I will let him take some where there's absolutely nowhere to go. This is one I may actually call him down if he tries to check raise me. He turns another nine. I don't think he has a nine for obvious reasons. And here's the river. I will not bet that. I will just check down. And he only had seven eight, so yeah, he was calling down with 8 high, which is a mistake on a board like that for exactly the reason of what you just saw, is that you don't want to have both people miss and have no chance of winning. You don't want that. You always want to have a hand with showdown value if you're going to call down a board like that. And king high actually has some showdown value heads up, but 8 high doesn't. You don't ever want a hand like 7-8 on a board 9-9 nine, nine deuce because we're going to go with it. If you don't hit your pair, you're losing for sure. I'm kind of smelling a check raise here. I do have a flush draw, but I'm going to check behind and avoid the decision of having to call a check raise and a river bet. I will call here with king high. And I was right about smelling the check raise. Something else to watch out for when you're playing Limit Hold'em against an opponent that uh, isn't a Limit Hold'em expert. They don't like to check-raise monster hands on the flop. So when they flop the trips like that, they hate check-raise in the flop because they feel like they're going to run you off the hand. They always want to wait till the turn. So if they do check-raise the flop, you can usually eliminate that they have that hand. If they check-raise the flop on a 7-6-6 board, you say, okay, they don't have a 6. 
and that's very useful information. Now, if they just check and call, you don't know what they have, but it makes it a lot easier to play post-flop if they check-raise the flop on a scary board like that, because you know they probably don't have it, because they're afraid to give that away on the flop. Personally, I like to check-raise both my strong hands and my weak hands on the flop, because this way people can't make that adjustment against me. I could have something good, I could have something bad. 10-5 I raised on the button, 10-5 suited that is. I'll take one off here, hope to hit the jack. We already have enough money in the pot to justify that. Now I will not take it off. I will let this one go and somehow despite all the bluffing, Yebsite almost back to even again. Jack nine of hearts. Missed that flop. I'm going to give up on it on the turn. No, actually, I'm not going to give up on it. I'm going to check call down. I'm going to try to see if he will bet the river. I'm afraid he may have a king. Or he could bluff. Not worth betting. He does have a king. That was one of those spots where you don't bet. You want to either induce a bluff or check call the worst hand or maybe check call the best hand, but you don't want to be the one betting into that and get raised and then have to call it. Or force him off when he has nothing. So back below even. This match has been going on for... Let's see here. Mm, about 40 minutes or so. People in the chat complaining this is never going to end, saying it should have been a hit, sit and go. But I think it will. I think the misleading thing so far is that neither person has been going on any run. But especially with Yebsite's tendency to tilt and get very aggressive, I think if I can manage to win a few hands in a row against him, then that could put an end to the match fairly quickly. Here's an interesting one. He is check-raising the flop. I've got top pair. I'm going to three-bet him. I don't think he flopped the flush. I think he has some kind of draw or nothing. And this makes the turn play easier. You don't really want to slow play a board like this where there's three diamonds. So I don't think he has an ace, and he's going to fold, so obviously he doesn't. And I don't think that because he did not three bet pre flop. So you definitely value bet the ace there. He folds to my 4 3 offsuit. A lot of value betting in heads up limit hold'em. A lot of times you have to keep betting even if you hate your hand. Ace five off suit, he's gonna fold. Now you can actually play on this poker room. Get uh, four thousand free chips. I'll send you myself. It's at uh, PokerFraudAlert.com, and just click on the No Fraud Online Poker Room and set up an account. Then just send me a PM, and I will give you chips. And you can play at one of many tables here. Some are limit, some are no limit. We even have some tournaments, so get in on the action. I'm going to call this one down. I don't like this board when he three-bet pre-flop, but I can't fold unless they get counterfeited. No counterfeiting, so I will call. And he hit a five at the end, but that won't do him any good against sixes. That was one of the spots where he was just bluffing, firing at it the whole way. You can't let it go, but had I raised him at any point, he would have folded, and he was drawing dead on the turn. Didn't expect him to be drawing dead, but it's just one of those things you call down in that spot. If there's only one overcard on the board, or one big card, like let's say it was... Uh, 
king seven deuce, I definitely would have raised. It was the fact that it was king queen, and he three bet free flop, decided it was just better to call down. So, queen seven suited. I'm going to three bet him here. He's going to call. The board will be 10 4 3, not a good board. He's raising me. I will call. And I'm just going to let this go. He could be raising a draw, but I don't want to call down queen high there. There's no point to waste money like that. Save my chips for better spots, and jack 9 off suit. He will fold to my raise. So when you get someone who's wild like Gibside is playing here, you can be tempted to call down things like queen high, and it's sometimes correct to do so. But you don't have to every time, and if you just really have nowhere to go in the hand, and the board has four different cards on it that he could have hit, and he's representing he has something, it's just better to let it go. Ace-8 off suit, and I've flopped middle pair and possible draws on this board. Could have 7-9, he could have clubs, could have something like 9-10. So he folded, but I was going to say that if he check-raised me, I was actually going to 3-bet him. The sum ace-8 is the best hand there. Pocket threes. Haven't had many pocket pairs here. I had the sixes before, but not many. And here's the flop. King-10-8, obviously bad board for threes. He's raising me, which is a nightmare against an opponent like Yebsite. And that's not a nightmare, though, on the turn, a three. And he checked behind, and now he could have made a draw. But he didn't. And uh, I was behind on the flop. Of course, that's not very surprising on a King-10-8 board when you get raised. But against a guy like Yebsite, you got to call that down anyway. And that's where you can have a lot of variance against an opponent like him. When the guy does a lot of bluffing, you've got to call down a lot of marginal hands. Fortunately, it was not marginal for me on the turn. And he was just trying to buy a free card there, thinking that his 8 may not be good, which is a reasonable conclusion. I'm going to fold this 10-6. You might wonder why I'm folding any hands against him when he's playing like this, but... You want hands that uh, you have somewhere to go with, so if you do hit something, he doesn't dominate you. Because just because Yepside's wild doesn't mean he's not going to hit any hands. So you don't want to call the 10-6 and have him have king-6 and have you both flop a 6, or he has king-10 and you have 10-6 and you both flop a 10, and then a lot of chips get in there and you're dominated. So... You really want hands with bigger cards, or hands that there's somewhere to go. I called this one because there's the king. And now I have to check-raise him and call down any 3-bets. He will 3-bet. I will call down. And that's not a good card. We'll make a lot of draws for him. And that will make even more draws. But believe it or not, I have to call if he bets, given the way he's playing. And indeed, I was ahead until that river. The check behind indicated that he had a fairly weak hand as well. Obviously, I didn't like that 8, but didn't expect that he had 8-5. But against a tighter player, you can fold there. But against a guy who's very wild, you have to make that call, especially when he checked behind the turn, and especially with some of the outright bluffs he's making. Jack-5 off suit. Totally missed this one. I will fold if he check-raises me. That's exactly what will happen. So it's not that I believe he has an ace, and I was going to say, uh, that could be a bluff. But, you just let those go. Let him do that when I actually have something, and give away chips. You don't have to win every hand to win the match. going to 
check fold that one. Indeed, he had me dominated and had a straight draw. The old seven deuce, we're going to dump, and all of a sudden the lead that I started to build up has dwindled to a small lead. The upside has been fortunate so far in that uh, some of the bluffs where he's shot off chips have not really hurt him in the long run because he's come back to win other hands. I guess you could say he'd be ahead if he didn't do that, but at least it hasn't decimated him. Jack Queen King on the flop. He's going to check behind, and there's a good card for me on the river giving me the nuts. Considered check raising that, but I think he had nothing. And I thought there was a good enough chance he had a five or something he would call. 7 6 off suit on a swing and a miss board. King, king, nine, and he's going to let it go. will fold if he raises here. Even suited 3-9 is just complete trash, and I was up against something pretty tough. King-8 of spades. He's going to 3-bet me pre-flop. No point to 4-bet that. I don't have any kind of showdown value. In fact, I may fold the turn if I don't improve. I'm calling the flop because of his tendency to bluff, and I'm actually going to raise this now. And he's 3-betting me. This could be the first big pot we have here in a while, long time. I will check... I will call to his bet. He's thinking and checking. This could be a trap, but... I was correct. I was correct to raise him. He tried to 3-bet, maybe with a jack. And then he had to fold. It's humiliating when someone check raises you in that spot after they three bet you on the turn and nothing different happens and they check to you and you bet again. But the way he's been playing, I figured that was probably a bluff or semi bluff. And he may have enough to still call. So it was still a value bet and a correct one, but I guess he didn't have enough to call. He's three betting. I'm actually going to four bet here since he's in such a maniac mode and he could have a draw easily. Now I've hit the turn and just hope the river doesn't beat me. I don't think it did. He's folding, so I was probably correct that he had a draw. Diamonds, a jack. It's one of those cases where you say, hey, I've got the top pair, you're playing like you have a draw, and even though I've got a terrible kicker and there's a lot of ways you can beat me, I'm raising because this is limit hold me. You can't put me all in with queen five, and I think I have the best hand. I think I'm up to my high now of 2,600. The upside is going to call. I've got jack-9 that I 3-bet preflop. I'm hoping he's just going to dump it here. He does not. I really have nowhere to go at this point. There's three diamonds on the board. Only out is probably a 10, so I'm just letting it go. It's possible he could have a 10 high hand, but not worth calling, especially with three diamonds out there, even against an opponent that's playing wild. Four six off suit, and he's going to fold to that. Happy to see that, because I would fold if he had raised me. Getting the button back now. Eight four of hearts. Kind of a marginal hand to be raising with, and now when he's 3-betting me, I'm not happy about it. And now I have to fold. <laughs> and he beat me with 7-4. Ace-5 spades. I 3-bet this. He's going to just call. And I have the overcard and the gut shot. I had a feeling he might raise me, but I'm just going to call this one down unless I improve. If I get a 5 or better, I will 
check raise him. I want to let him fire at this one now. And that's exactly what I was hoping. That he would fire something into me with a worse hand. No point to bet it there. Though I think he would have called King High, but if he had worse than King High, he wasn't going to call. So, a7 offsuit. He three bet me. I considered four betting it, but we'll just call him down here now. With an unfavorable board. Even if he checks, I'm going to check. I don't want to get check raised here. Just have to call down and hope he doesn't have it. Well, he nailed it on the turn. So about 2,500 to 1,500 at the moment after he wins a decent pot there. And I've flopped a draw. I'm actually going to check raise this here. I haven't done this very often to him. I'll try to make him fold. And I did. This is a spot where he was likely to miss queen seven deuce with two diamonds. So even to an aggressive opponent, it's good to check raise the draw there and just get him to drop it, especially since 9-5 has no showdown value. If you have a hand with showdown value, it's better to check call down the draws sometimes. That one, I'm really hoping he folds because I have to hit something to beat him. King-9 suited. I'm three betting on the big line. Flop completely misses. Queen-3-4 with two hearts. He's raising me, and unfortunately there's enough draws here where I probably have to calm down. And that made one of the draws, and now I have to think if I want to call this one. So this pot got a little bit big for having King-high. And unfortunately, the way he's playing, I have to call king high and treat it the same way I treat ace high. And he hit it on the turn, so I had the correct idea, but the incorrect result. And you have said, putting a little smiley face in the chat over that one. King three offsuit, he three bet me preflop. Not going to raise here. And I hit the card. So I've got a straight here. Haven't made many draws so far. Taking that one down, obviously. He flopped bottom pair. Notice he three bet me preflop with Jack Deuce offsuit, so that just shows his three bet preflop can be a lot of things. We've seen him do that with four five offsuit and other weak hands, so Got to be aware, of course, that the 3-bet pre no longer means a real hand. Or even a semi-real hand. Because he's doing so many light 3-bets, you especially don't want to play hands like deuce 8 off suit. Because you are hoping to have the better hand than him pre-flop. So now I'm hoping that he goes wild with me. I hope this is the one time he doesn't fold. He's raising me. Now, I'm going to 3-bet this. Against a lot of players, I'll just call this and check the check raise the flop. But this is what I was hoping for, a big raising war. Unless he has aces. And the flop, hopefully we don't see an ace. We don't. And the turn, we don't want to see a jack, and that's exactly what we see. And that could be a problem, but he didn't raise me. River unlikely to matter much unless he had a flush draw. And he had ace-queen. Was a good preflop hand, but not good enough to beat kings. And I dodged a bullet there with queen-jack-10 on the board with seven bets preflop. And that was really the only hand I could beat. I couldn't beat ace-king, couldn't beat queens, jacks, or tens. So I could really only beat nines, ace-jack, or ace-queen. And I've taken a 2,700 to 1,300 lead. Here, I could check-raise it, but he's going to think this is a draw. So I'm not going to. He's going to say, Druff has a draw, and he's not going to give it up, and I have no showdown value. 
And I'm actually going to drop this if he bets. But if he doesn't bet, I may actually bluff at it on the river. He does bet. reason I drop it is there's just not enough ways to win this one. I'd have to hit that gut shot. Maybe the pair. And he has to get two more beers. So if he's telling the truth, that probably means we have some wilder play in store. Now you have to watch out when people tell you things like that when you're playing them online. They could be lying about drinking so that you play them like they're like they're drunk when they're really not. But I think in Yev's cases in Yev's case it's real. I think he really is getting beers and it probably is gonna affect his play. Perhaps the first beer is what changed him from being a conservative opponent, which he was at the beginning, to a wild opponent, what we have now. And you always have to watch that when you're playing someone heads up. Their mood can drastically change, and their play can drastically change, and this goes both ways. Sometimes their play gets better from them getting in a better mood. Sometimes it gets worse. Here, Yepside has definitely gotten worse as the time has passed. And he's four betting me. I almost want to five bet this, but Ace-10, it's just not quite good enough out of position to do that, even if you think he's bluffing. I'm actually going to check-raise him here, thinking I have the best hand. And he's three-betting me, so whether I do or not, there's going to be a check-call down. And that's not my favorite card, because I could have made something for him. But it was the turn again. He's hit a lot of turns here so far. So I had the right idea on the flop, even though I missed, but he nailed the turn. I raised 3-5 suited, which the way he's playing could have been one to fold, but I was hoping to make something he didn't expect with a, a draw, get a lot of money out of him but missed it completely, and he actually just folded on the button, which is surprising the way he's been playing. Queen-10 suited. I might have to start 4-betting him now on the button when he 3-bets me light with hands like this. This doesn't have the best showdown value, but it's better showdown value than a lot of the hands he's playing. Now this is the problem, is he he seems to want to get into this endless raising and then you don't know what to do when you get a board like this. And you do know what to do now when you flopped or you turned a straight. And he had nothing as evidenced by the quick fold. When you're playing an opponent and they just quickly dump it like that, that means they have zero, where there's no decision. And that will tell you that all their aggression prior to that in the hand was full of crap. Ace-10 again. I will 4-bet Ace-10. See, it gets tempting to 6-bet here, but again, it's only Ace-10. There's only so far you want to commit with this. You want to wait till a little better spot here. And uh, I'm just going to call down this one unless I improve. And there's the improvement. The reason for that is uh, with him 5-betting, there's a decent shot that he had one of those cards. Now, usually when somebody 3-bets you here, you don't 4-bet them because they have, could have queen-10. But because it's Yep's side, I will 4-bet, but I only call a 5-bet. He just calls. That card is meaningless. We're either chopping or I beat him. No, I beat him. So that's why when an opponent's going nuts like that, you can't give them credit for having the one hand that can beat you. You have to put in more bets, and if they happen to have it, then they don't. <laughs> he properly guessed what I had with the ace-10. And now I've flopped the king, and he's just going to fold that one. Yep, Sight's lost almost half the buy-in so far, down to 1,100. Of course, stack sizes don't matter since it's the limit until they get really low but it does matter as far as how long he'll survive. But unlike No Limit, where uh, you can commit someone's whole stack on any hand if you have them outstacked, Limit, 
the amount in front of you only matters as far as how long you'll survive unless you're really short. I'm just going to check this down. Bef earlier I bluffed him off of it, but now I'm going to let him try to bluff me. When someone's in a very wild mood, you don't want to try to bluff them on a board like Ace-A-6. And he's going to win that with an 8 kicker. Or sorry, not an 8 kicker, with a uh, pair of 6s. So I'm the one who spiked the turn, but the wrong turn. Board King King 8. Got Jack 3 offsuit. And I'm going to bet this and fold to a raise. Reason for that was I thought he might be bluffing me, but then he was. But I didn't want to call Jack high. But it's okay to let that happen because uh, he'll do this later on when I really have something. So it's actually better to do that than to check call the Jack high because Jack High just doesn't have much showdown value, especially with no kicker. And he could have spiked his pair on the river. So might as well let him think he can bluff you off like that. And then he'll hang himself later on when you really have something. Now if I had something like Queen High or Ace High, I'm just uh, check calling that down. He 4-bet pre-flop. I only have a 7, and I missed the flop. So this is one of those spots where I don't love it, but I'm going to have to check call it down and just hope it doesn't get worse. Did pick up a gut shot here. And I hit it. And I'm just going to bet, thinking that he'll probably check down. Not sure if he would have value bet that or not, but he sees what's out there. He sees there's a gut shot that can beat him one card straight, so no point to check-raise that when there's a decent chance he'll check behind with a pair. Flop two pair didn't get him to bite. This is a case where I don't 3-bet 8-7 suited because I don't want to get in a big raising war with a hand that has no showdown value. And again, I don't want to get in a big raising war here, even, even though I have a double gut shot. And now I wish I did, because I hit the straight. Now I can check raise him. So finally I'm hitting some hands. Hope he does not have a flush. He does not. Take that down. Not much he could do on that one. He didn't play that one badly at all. He just was unlucky. I would have done the same thing as him the whole way. So, well, I have criticized the upside's play on some of the hands. That one he played just fine. He just didn't work out well. But as you saw, had I raised before I got there, he would have kept giving me action. I'm going to raise him right here. He's going to 3-bet. Now remember, he 3-bet pre-flop. I do have the low diamond draw, but uh, might as well just call down here. He's got the better kicker. He's got the flush. So be it. Now I have the flush. He's checking. I am going to value bet. And he has checked raised me. And I do have egg on my face here. And a pretty ballsy check raise on the river, given that I could have the ace. But it worked. And he got himself out of dire straits there. So he check raised the draw on the flop and got there. And he's 3-betting me. I have middle pair with no kicker. I will just call down here. Hoping to hit the 4 or another 3 or maybe even a 5 on the river. It's not going to help. I'm going to check. He's going to bet. I will call. And he has 2 pair. The upside making a small comeback. Back to 1,300 in chips after being below a thousand. With King High. I'm going to try to run a move on him on the turn. 
unless he checks. I raise him and see if he will dump it. He will not. Obviously, just a check down for me. And he has middle pair. This is one of those cases where so your opponent has been very aggressive. There was a good chance he had nothing there. And turned out he had something. That's why I didn't bother to bet the river, because I knew if he's calling me, he has me beat. He's raising here. I've got the gut shot straight, hoping for the deuce. A lot of draws possible on this board. He's got to call down the ace high, unless I make something. I will call this, and hope he missed. And he hit the turn again. A lot of turns for Yepsite. And he's ground me back down to 2300. Quite a comeback. And we'll just call down this board with the ace high. Won't bother raising. I don't want to have to make a decision about a 3-bet. And he has uh, a pocket pair and wins again. So as you see, you can be going well, especially against an opponent who's shooting off chips, and all of a sudden you start running bad, and you have to call them down. I'm going to 4-bet this jack-queen suited. May still be the best hand, even though he's 5-betting me, but no point to go further than this. Here's the jack. I'm going to raise him right here. He's 3-betting. Call this one down. Betting the river for value. That's obviously going to be the winner. So, I guess I should have taken it further on the flop, but it was only Queen Jack. He did go five bets pre-flop. Even though, if it, even though it is the upside, you have to understand he could have better than Queen Jack in many cases there. So, you don't want to shoot off too much with just one pair of Queen Kicker. Especially since this is a freeze-out. You can't just rebuy, so that's another consideration. This was a regular cash game situation. I might go more bets than that. And this is a case, again, where he could have a draw. Eight, deuce, five. Another eight is not my favorite card, because it could kill my outs, but I'm going to check all it down. He could easily have six, seven, or some other draw. We're actually going to check raise him here, thinking he does not have the eight. And he's going to three bet me, he probably has it. He does, Wow, he had a full house. This is one of these cases where he would have played it the same if he had a 5 or a deuce, and he was just happening to hold the 8. That was a bad card on the river. I call down the 3s here. This is when an aggressive opponent keeps hitting. It's not a good news. And again, hits the turn with nothing on the flop, and we're back to even. So this is heads up limit hold'em for you. A lot of times the aggressive betting strategy can result in a big run if you're getting the better cards. This is one where you just float with a dry board. Now I picked up a straight draw. Now I picked up a pair. And he had pocket kings. Wow. He is really running hot. 
fortunately I did well enough earlier to where I'm still around even. So Yebsite on an amazing run, probably winning about uh, 1,500 straight. King 8 spades on a missed flop. And I'm just going to let this one go. And he had a worse hand, but there's nowhere to go with that one. And if he had an ace, then I was drawing dead pretty much. So ace-king suited. Hopefully I'll hit something here and start to come back. There's a flop we both missed. Odd uh, that was the one hand he hasn't raised in a long time. I didn't get to get much out of him pre-flop. You have to make a lot of light call downs against a player like this, and you can really go into big slumps if they're hitting. So they can shoot off their chips fast, but they can also get your chips quickly if it's going their way. And we've just flopped trips, and this is what I was talking about earlier. I'm just going to check raise it right now, because he'll think I don't have it. Now, when they three bet like this, you want a four bet so they don't check behind. Now, he folded, but if he had an ace there, he's calling you down anyway. And if he doesn't have an ace, he's folding the turn. He's check folding, you know, whatever happens. So you might as well just go for the gusto on that one. King Deuce, he 3-bet pre-flop, and again, just a complete miss. It's a good chance he has worse, but no point to waste chips calling that down. Now I've got the ace. Ace 9 off. And I've flopped top pair, something I haven't done very often so far. Another 3. If he raises me, I'm going to 3-bet him here. There's the raise, here's the 3-bet reason for the 3-bet is I don't believe he had a 3, because I think he would have raised that on the flop. And I was correct. He was slow, play, slow playing top pair. This is where you just say, hey, this guy probably would have raised the flop with bottom pair on that type of board. And if he didn't, when bottom pair makes trips, you just think he doesn't have it. Now, if he raised me again, I would have just called, because... Uh, you know, what if he flopped two pair? What if he flopped a set? There's a number of things he could have still been slow playing, but it looked to me that that was a good three bet spot, and I was correct. Ace Jack off, three betting pre. Flop the ace on a all club board. He doesn't want any part of it, and I'm back over even. I guess I was a little bit before the hand, but uh, back to about 2200, and hoping I can go on another run here to get the chips back that I lost just before. Now he's checking on the 3-3-3 board. 7-5 is not the best hand to have in this spot because he could already have me beat if he's got a higher pocket pair. And I'm going to fold. So, I'm just going to call this hand, this queen five, flop the five. Now, against tighter opponents, I will fold this pre-flop in the big blind because they have me dominated and they won't give me that much action if I hit something that beats them. But uh, against him, I felt it was worth calling. He 3-bet pre-flop and uh, saying his daughter just got back. I just hit the river and smart check by him as I rivered him and he didn't get to be check raised, which I was going to do. Taking a two minute break. Daughter just got back and have to piss. BRB. Okay. Once again, this is PokerFraudAlert.com as it says on the screen. I am Todd Dan Druff Wittellis. 
I am playing Yebsite in a 2040 Limit Hold'em heads-up match where we both bought in for 2000 There is no rake, since this is a play-money game. This is a freeze-out, so the blinds never go up, but whoever goes down to zero cannot rebuy, and the match is over. We've been going about uh, an hour and 15 minutes so far. Very little overall movement. He did lose more than half his stack at one point, but went on a rush and actually got ahead of me before giving a little bit back. He did just take a bad beat before this little break. He's back, and I've picked up trash. I'm not going to bother calling the 6-9 off suit. And finally, a good high pocket pair. He's three betting. I'm going to four bet. I'm going to go pretty far with this one. He's going to five bet. I'm going to six bet. He's going to call, which means he does not have anything very good. Don't like seeing the clubs because now any club can beat me. We're going to go three bets here, though. And don't want to see a club. And a six. He could have a 6, but we're just going to still bet. He doesn't have a 6, probably. 7 is a good card. Unlikely to matter much. He's going to fold. Looks like he had a club and no pair. It's one of those boards where you weren't that thrilled with it the whole way, but still thought you had the best hand, and you got to keep betting. Going to drop the 9-4 offsuit for obvious reasons. Drop the 2-8 offsuit. So that queen's hand is exactly what we're hoping to see in the future here. Just making a lot of big hands pre-flop or post-flop and getting a lot of chips out of him. And that will be the key to winning here. It's uh, taking down big pots and uh, having to give away some smaller ones. The diamond draw here, I do have to call this down. Not the river, but at least the turn. And didn't make it. He's not showing me that hand, which means he probably had something. He's been liking to show bluffs recently, and he just threw that one in the muck. 3-bet me pre-flop. I've flopped middle pair with jack-8. He's 3-betting. Considering 4-betting, but I will just uh, let him fire into me. Hoping he didn't make the flush here. And the river. He's betting. I'm calling. And he had the 10, indeed. Not much you can do in that spot. Just got to call down after he shows some strength. Going to let this 10-5 offsuit go. Nine ten offsuit. I'm just going to be calling here, and this is one of those cases where you don't call with overcards. There's just too many ways to lose that one, and not enough upside calling down with only ten high. And I'm gonna have to fold that, and we're back to just about even. So the rush I've been waiting for. I've only had one of them, and then he had one to answer me. Until we get one of those again, it's going to be a little while until I get chips.
the website saying he forgave Willie Mc FML for stealing from him. So we'll see if that's true. But that's been a long-running complaint that Willie stole. And I have hit third pair. His bottom pair is going to be no good, so my attempt to call for a gut shot and the check behind on the turn allowed me to take down a small pot. I'm going to raise the ace-5 offsuit. Actually, would have 4-bet that if he 3-bet me. I do have a gut shot. And the second queen makes me think he doesn't have a queen. I'm going to bet that. I'm going to check the river. He's betting the river, which means there's a good chance he hit a 9. Obviously, I have to call this, though. Nope, he missed it. So when you have a bet out like that into you from a wild player, you can never fold ace high there. But uh, sometimes that will mean they hit the pair. You just have to hope that is a bluff, and there it was. Folded trash on my big blind. Now I've got ace-king suited, which is far from trash, on my button. I will get into a raising war with this one if he wants to re-raise me. He's playing a little bit shorter, a little bit uh, slower because he's chatting right now. And of all things, he folds and I've got the ace-king suited. So just when I'm ready to go, a lot of bets with him. He goes zero with me. 9-8 suited. I will 3-bet uh, that one. A lot of ways this hand can come up a winner, but it does have to hit something. I will take one off. Now I've hit a big draw here, or made a big draw has come down. Unfortunately, I just have to check here. I think he's going to... Oh my goodness. I thought he had ace high. King high or something. I probably made a mistake by not betting that. There's no way I win that unless uh, I bet. And given his tendency to four bet with crap and his check behind on the turn, I did make a mistake there. So he's checking. I'm going to check. No reason to induce a check raise or anything like that. He's going to check again. And I will beat him with queen high. The reason I didn't bet. The river is because he can only call if he can beat me. In the turn, if he didn't already have me, I wasn't risking all that much. I was only risking he was going to catch a better pair. Or catch a pair and I don't have one. So against a wild player, you don't pound the non-showdown draws as much. So he's checking now, and I'm going to check and hope to hit something. So if I didn't commentate on that full hand, but he 3-bet pre-flop, and then I flopped a gut shot, but only 8 high. He checked, and I checked. Here's aces. I think this is the first time I've had aces. Again, not going to disguise the aces. I'm just going to 3-bet them, hoping he'd get in a raising war. He did not. And this one could have some fireworks with the coordinated board of 5-6-9 clubs. But no, he had nothing, absolutely nothing, to where he dumps it. Wow. He must have had, like, Jack Deuce or something that completely missed. This is a case where I'm going to 4-bet with a hand that I normally wouldn't because of how late he's been 3-betting. He is firing out, and now I'm just going to call down as I improve. This time I'm going to bet. And he's going to check-raise me, so it looks like he got me on this one, unless I improve. And wow, unbelievable hand by Yebsite. Very well played to have picked up a big pot with bottom pair. Embarrassing one for me. But usually when he's been check checking to me on a board like that, it's meant he's had nothing. And I hit ace high on a gut shot, and then I was committed once he check raised me. I've got a uh, middle pair here. I'm just going to 4-bet this one. 
He's going to five bet now. I think I could be in trouble. Especially with a draw hitting and a queen on the river. And wow, he shot off a lot of money there he didn't have to. So the upside after excellent play with that king deuce. And I'm, I'm being serious here. I'm not being sarcastic. That was excellent play to get a lot of money out of me when he just had bottom pair. Uh, shot off way too much with middle pair out of position. I'm going to have a lot of raising here when I get pocket tens. And seven bets pre-flop. Hoping to see low cards. There is a king there. And the turn probably won't mean much. He folds. This is why Yepsite's an interesting opponent. He can make some excellent plays, like he did with that King Deuce, and then just throw away chips in the next two hands. So the funny thing is, Yepsite actually has some potential to be a good player, but he has to control the waste of chips. And of course, his waste of chips is what allows me to run into some of his traps, because sometimes it's hard to have any idea what he's got. And he does run some traps, but then he also runs some outright bluffs, and this may be trouble. He may have hit the ace here. He did. He hit two pair, in fact. Good bet on his part, because I was going to check it behind. He figured I would probably check it behind if I didn't have an ace. So he wins that pot. And made sense that he called down there with the pair of fours. He just hit on the river. 7-6 off suit. I got 3-bet, and I have a gut shot draw. I will not raise because I don't want to waste chips doing so. Now let it go. So I don't want to chase on the turn a gut shot when I have absolutely no shutdown value with the hand. even against an opponent that bluffs. It's possible that my pair draw was good, but until I hit something, the hand was going to lose for sure. Check raising bottom pair here, and now it's trips. And unless he made a flush, I'm going to win this one. The upside taking a bad beat there. Middle pair. He's three betting. I'm four betting with my pocket fours and hoping to see a four in the flop. And my goodness, what a flop! I'm going to three bet him. He's going to four bet me. I'm going to five bet him and make him think I don't have it. I hope he made the flush here. That's all I can say. So I could have wait, waited until the turn to raise up. Oh, there's a good diamond. Finally happy to see the one-card flush make it. And he's going to fold. Hopefully he's videotaping this. I'd love to see what he has. And he's getting another beer after this hand, I guess. So monster flop. I tried to just give him a lot of action right out front. So if he was slow playing something or was going to make something that he wasn't going to believe I really flopped a monster like that. I guess he's not getting a beer. And pocket queens in the button. Obvious raise here. And we're going to go to war and hope he doesn't flop a king or ace. Yep, so I'm putting in a lot of money here. I will go pretty far with this. I don't know how far, but queens the way he's been playing. It's a good hand. I do have the diamond draw, so don't have to fear that as much unless he's got an ace or a king of diamonds. He is check raising me here. I'm going to three bet him. He's four betting me. It looks like he's got something real. And the diamond. Question is do I have a hand that beats him? I'm just going to call this one. No. I cannot beat him. So I was better on the turn. I made the right play on the turn, but he put the bad beat on the river with the diamond. So 
So that one could have been a turning point, and I did just make a good fold to his aces. That hand could have been the turning point in the match that could have really put me up on him, but I have not been able to... get any kind of run like that. Very large pots like that have been going to him after they go to me. I haven't gotten a few in a row. So back to 2100. Match going on longer than I expected. But hey, I could even lose this if uh, I continue to run bad. Because you can lose chips quickly to a player like this. And I'm going to bet this with a nut flush draw. He's going to call. I will not bet the river. He's going to bet the river, and if he has a four, he's going to get value out of me. He does. Except he gets uh, two pair, actually. Bad card for me. Cost me extra money. He was going to just check down and lose if we both missed. And I flopped trips, and this is another spot where I'm not going to pretend that I'm waiting that I missed, and you know, I'm just going to hit it on the flop and make him think I don't have it. And the river, and ace. I'm going to try to check raise him here. And I got him to fold, which means he probably did not have very much, or anything. So even though that could have made a flush, given the way he's been playing, it's a decent chance he had ace high, and there's a decent chance he had nothing that was going to bluff at it. So, that's why I check-raised that river, which may have gotten me an extra bet. He may have folded the river if I bet. Depended if he actually had a hand he could call. Here's 9-9 nine, nine deuce. Rather than getting a whole war with him, I'm just going to check this one, check call this one down. He's check-calling, or he's checking, shall I say. I'm going to call with the ace. And he hit the turn. Surprising check on the turn by him. I would have given him one more bet. And with queen three off, I missed, and I'm going to fold. So back to around even. The thing that's been killing me today has been the turn. Well, not rivers, really, but the turn has just really nailed me here. Though I did lose a river on that very big pot with the queens against his ace-jack. So he checked behind with the 8, 10, 10. And for that reason, I think there's some kind of weird trap being set up here. Now I'm going to bet out. And I think I may have been right the whole way. No, I was... He wasn't setting up a trap. So I was going to let him bluff at it, which I did on the turn. And then when the queen hit, I thought I better bet it. Because now I could beat the 8 also. A number of other things he had that he would have called, but uh, he raised me and didn't have anything. I'm going to raise him here on a board that he'll probably fold if he's missed. Unless he's in really maniac mode here. He's just called. I'm going to check behind and hope for the spade. 
really don't want to get in a raising war with this one. This is one of these things, you gave it a shot. Yeah, he actually had a slightly worse hand that I would have beaten him in showdown, but no way to know that. And he would have check-raised the turn, I bet, with the straight and flush draw. So the check behind on the turn was actually good. So when you have an opponent that does make a lot of semi-bluffs and bluffs on the turn, and all you have is some sort of very moderate draw where the hand itself has no showdown value, you don't want to bet and cost yourself more money, and then even if you do hit, you may not be good when you only have like a 9-high 1-card flush draw. So that's where you try to keep the pot cheaper, and if he happens to run you off of it and get a smaller pot, then so be it. You're looking to win the big pots against someone like this, and you're looking to call them down with ace-high type of hands and win those. Unfortunately, as you've seen, I have not had many ace-high hands at all, and the ones I've had have not really held up, and the big pots have not gone very well for me. So... He's offering a bet on uh, red-black of the flop, but I don't feel like keeping track of that. Four hearts on the board. He's checking, and I'm going to have to call this as much as I hate to. And it would have been a good call, because I won the hand. Queen four suited. He's re-raising. I'm just going to call. And this is one of those hands where I just... I'm not even going to take it anywhere. Could have the best hand, but... Do have the best hand, but... Let him shoot off with hands like that. Not going to win every time. And I just folded to his queen, so something I have been lucky with is I've folded to a lot of his big hands, queens, aces. It's happened a number of times already, where pre-flop I have folded, and he's gotten just about nothing out of them. So, in that way, I have been fortunate. I have not been fortunate with getting him into big pots and beating him for a lot of money. He's taken more of the big pots than I have. And despite having 4-9, that was the best hand on the flop. People are saying the game could go on for days. I think it's going to come to an end in one way or another fairly soon. Because at some point, someone's going to go on a run. Either he's going to just hit every hand and beat me as I tear my hair out, or I will get hands and he'll shoot a lot of money off. So I think there will be some movement soon. The thing that's been happening here is that uh, whenever one person gets ahead... The other one catches up. There hasn't been any kind of real run except for I had one big run and he had one big run. I'm just going to check this behind. I don't want to see a check raise. And that's a bad card on the river. I will check down and hope I have a better hand. I do. I had to make a decision on the river if you bet. That was not an obvious fold. Not saying I would have called, but I would have had to think about it. Maybe call. A lot of trash here, as you've seen. And as I say that, I get the worst trash possible. Three-deuce offsuit. It's debatable whether three-deuce or seven-deuce is the worst hand uh, in a heads-up game. So I called pre-flop. I'm going to bet this one. 
And this is interesting because he checked behind which makes it look like he missed 6, 7, 8, and I bet the king, he would have thought he would have raised Yvette a king, and, and the second king really says he doesn't have the uh, king. So I'm going to have to call this and hope he missed with a worse straight draw. And he had bottom pair, and what, what's, what's odd about the way he played that is having a 6 on a 6, 7, 8 board heads up is pretty good. That was an odd thing to check behind, because he lets a lot of hands come back and beat him for free. So I thought he had nothing, and then was trying to call down with some sort of weird draw that could have been worse than mine if we both missed. But there's the cap pre-flop, or not cap, 4-bet pre-flop with, uh, he 4-bet it. I have Jack-10 after 3-betting pre-flop. And I have flop top pair. Not happy to see the king, but he will fold. Still betting into it, of course. When I say I'm not happy, that doesn't mean I'm going to check behind. Doesn't mean I'm convinced he has it, but obviously you always want a lower board when you've got that situation. Still sitting around even. Just in case you're wondering, today's date is Sunday, May 13th, 2012. We're almost at 2 p.m. Pacific Time. Dumping some trash there. Queen Jack. I will 4-bet this if he 3-bets me. Reason for the 4-bet, I'm in position, and based on his 3-betting, it's usually the best hand, the Queen Jack, but I'm not going to go farther than that. Now, this is the problem when he 5-bets, and you totally missed the board. I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> he's been getting away with a lot of bluffs, where he's just a little bit behind me, but I've missed it so badly that I can't continue. But there were just too many ways I lose that one. Ace high, any of the pairs on the board, pocket pairs, I mean, there's very little I could beat at that point. Here's Queen Jack again. And we're going to go four again. He's going to just call. And another time I miss. So does he, I take it down. And 10 high, 10, 10 7 that is off suit. He's 3 betting me. I'm just going to call this. Picked up a gut shot straight draw, I'll call. And I have to fold again. It's once again a case that you don't want to waste money calling when there's not a lot of places to go with a hand and it's not going to win a showdown. Just going to call the queen eight here out of position. Pocket nine is finally a decent hand after I've been shut down by the deck for a while. You have four bets, he just calls. Eight, seven, eight is a good flop for me unless he has an eight, but I don't think he does. I just don't see him betting out like that with just an eight. Now, there's a higher chance he has the 8 with he bet out like that than a check raise. I'm going to 4-bet. If he 5-bets, I will just call. He's going to just call. He may have a big draw that may have made the draw. Just a call here. 
and the river is the call as well, even though I have these flush. And he had nothing, Jack High. So a nine would have really set off some fireworks. Would have made a straight for him, a boat for me. And Yebsite once again throws away some chips. So it's never a good thing to just bluff at someone when they clearly have a hand in Limit Hold'em. In No Limit, it can work because you can commit them to a lot more money than they want to put in with a mediocre hand. But in Limit Hold'em, there's only so much you can lose on every hand, and once someone has decided, I'm digging my heels and I'm not folding, no matter what comes, if you're bluffing, you're just wasting your money. And that's one of the biggest mistakes people make in Limit Hold'em, is they just don't consider the likelihood of their opponent folding. Especially in, in Heads Up. But in general, in Limit Hold'em, if you're in any pot where you're up against one opponent, whether it's in a ring game or Heads Up, you're not going to get the guy to fold if he has something. It doesn't have to be something great, even just like a pair or ace high. If it just seems like they are not dropping their hand, and they probably don't just have a draw, there's no point to keep firing at them. And you can't talk yourself into believing they always have a draw and keep firing at them, or you're going to waste a lot of money. You might wonder why I didn't raise the turn there with the three spades, since I have the nine of spades, and since Yipsite has been aggressive and wasting bets. He did play that one like he may have flopped a draw of spades and made it, or may have even had the eight and was concerned with the flush that he didn't want to give another free card. So definitely wasn't going to fold there under any circumstances, but there was no point to raise. Speaking of raising, I get check raised after a lot of action pre-flop with ace-queen. Obviously a draw on this board. Now I have a draw with a diamond. Draw misses. He bets. I'm going to call. And the one hand I was hoping he would have, queen-jack, is what he has. So obviously wasn't thrilled with ace-queen there, but the way he's been playing, you can't let that go. He's been check-raising gut shots all the time, and sometimes check-raising nothing. So ace-queen has showdown value just by itself. Looks like a lot of little side bets being made by various guys in the chat watching this. I want to thank a user named Steven. I don't know if he's watching this or even comes to our site anymore, but uh, he showed up and made this background for our poker table, because this is obviously not the background that came with the poker software, but uh, it looks very nice. So thank you to Steven, and I know uh, Belly Buster, who's the administrator for the No Fraud Poker Room, did some things as well to fix a few issues with uh, the graphics of the seats. I appreciate everything he's done for this site. Bottom pair, I'm going to still bet. And I'll tell you right there, that may have been a mistake. The reason it might have been a mistake is that there wasn't much that he was calling with. But I did it because I thought he may have a draw, and I'm just checking here, obviously. And he had nothing. So that's why I still bet. I'm not going to defend it just because it happened to work out for me, but uh, I was thinking that there's a decent chance he could have been slow playing something there, like a king. And especially with the ace hitting, I thought maybe it was better to check behind. But uh, it helped me because he ended up uh, bluffing on the turn and giving me an extra bet. That wasn't as bad of a bluff because that one I would fold if... Uh, now this one here, I have to bet here. I was going to check raise him. That's really be too bad if I lose this one after flopping the straight. But he had nothing. So I was trying
trying to check raise him on the flop. He checked behind and then bluffed me on the turn when the scare card hit. Pocket queens, I go four bets with that. Nine, six, seven, very coordinated board. I don't have any club. Not my favorite board for queens, but we will get in a raising war here. And now I'm starting to get a little bit worried, especially with that card. And indeed, the queen eight beats the queens. So I did have the best hand on the flop, did uh, go a lot of bets with him. But bad turn once again. So flop bottom pair, that's a raisable hand here, especially against Yebsite. And here I am going to bet, and if he happens to have one of these better cards here, so be it. This really looks like he has something like Ace High. Nope, doesn't even have Ace High. I would have thought if he could beat what I had, he was going to raise me on the turn unless he had a 7. We have started asking me if I had... I'm drinking Pepsi, at least. And actually, I am. I am drinking Pepsi during this match. So it's the hands like the Queens against the Queen 8, the big pots like that, that have been eluding me from taking any kind of lead here. I have a small lead at the moment, 2430 to 1570. This match going on so long, I may have to plug in my laptop shortly. I'm sure going to. I want to four bet the Jack Queen. I seem to always get Jack Queen on the button. I don't seem to hit with it very much, and once again, I did not hit. Over cards in a gut shot, but have not hit with it. Question is, do I try to call down the river if I don't improve? And that's a pretty bad card. Now there's really very little I can beat if you think about it. I cannot beat a six, a five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks like I can only beat queen ten. Things like 10 4. Yeah. Can't beat anything. He shows me Queen 10. Oh, there's the 6. So he actually had the best hand the whole way. But even against someone who's uh, raising pretty aggressively, you always want to be aware of what could he have. And it can be tempting to call that Queen Jack, thinking he just has a naked 10, but then 10 what? What does he have? A 10 Jack you're losing, 10 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 you're losing, 10 King you're losing, 10 Ace you're losing. There's just really almost nothing you can beat there. This Queen 10, I'm just going to call the turn, or sorry, the 3 bet on the f pre flop. I will raise with the 10, and I'm going to 4 bet this. He's 5-betting, and I'm just going to call here with top pair. I'm just going to call that turn, and the river, don't like seeing an ace because he's the type of player who would pound ace no pair on the flop. But now you had me the whole way. So back to even. 
he's just 4-bet me after I 3-bet the queen 9, and I've just hit the queen on the flop. And I'm going to 4-bet him here. He's 5-betting me. I will call. Once again, it's only a queen with a 9 kicker, so he's checking behind. So this is where now an ace hits on the river. And I win the hand, but lose a lot of value. Not a lot I can do there. You go five bets with that with the queen nine kicker after a lot of action preflop, and then just everything came down wrong after that. So at least I still won the hand. But when you're out of position, uh, you have to you have to decide how far you're going to go with hands like that. I decided five bet was my limit. As you saw the hand before that, he had uh, a real hand with uh, ace ten. He's three betting me preflop. I or on the flop, I raised him with bottom pair. Call this down, unless I improve. That's not improvement. I'm going to call, and he has top pair with ace-10 again. So, two good ace-10 hands for Yepsite, where I hit something as well. This match is never-ending. And I got a7 high here. And he's checking, I'm checking. I don't like that board. And now I have to just check down. No point to bet that. And I actually put the bad beat on him with the straight on the board. The reason you don't bet that with the straight on the board is that your opponent's always calling. And if he has you beat, he's raising you. And then it's hard for you to fold. So there's nothing that can be gained from betting that there in Limit Hold'em unless you really have something that can beat the board. And that's a mistake that some players make. I know he did not make that mistake there, but uh, a lot of novice players make that mistake, thinking, oh, I'll just bet that, maybe he'll fold. But, or they just bet because the guy checks to them. But there's no point. You know he's going to call. I mean, just about nobody's folding there. Once in a while, you can make that fold if you're against a player who you know doesn't bet it unless they really have it. But usually, you just have to call. So, you should not be the one betting at it. Unless you are against a player who is capable of folding there, but very few are. So, taking one off there. the back door draws. Now I did pick up a, a gut shot draw and I have missed. I did not bet that thinking that he will probably check call and I was right. So three betting Jack King. He's four betting I will just call out of position. I'll take one off on the flop here. We'll let go on the turn. Just nowhere really to go with Jack King and four different cards on the board, increasing the chance he has a pair already. So I raised the flop with 8 to 5 of diamonds and have flopped a flush. I think it's the first flush I have flopped this match. We're going to go a lot of bets here. Also have a straight flush draw. Don't want to see a diamond. That card is fine. Could not have changed anything. And that card, not quite as fine, but not that scared of it. I think if he had two pair, he would have gone more with this on the, the flop return. He has no reason to think I flopped a flush. Indeed, he looks like he had nothing. Probably not even the ace high diamond draw. Looks like just some kind of uh, weaker diamond draw, if I had to guess. Maybe along with a straight draw. So I win a decent pot, not a huge pot, but uh, break a little bit of a slump. Again, if you notice with the 
flush that I flopped, I didn't wait to raise it. Here I'm going to bet. The reason I bet that, despite not having a club, is I don't want to give him free cards, including another club that will chop it for us. I didn't think he was checking behind with a club draw. He's, he's, the upside seems to like draws, and he would probably have bet there with any club. So that made me think he didn't have one. In fact, so much that I would have called down if he raised me. Flop middle pair, but an all-diamond board, and this time I'm not happy to see an all-diamond board. I'm actually going to three-bet this. I think he's just raising me with a diamond draw. Now I'll call with him four-betting me, So I only have middle pair. I don't want to make my straight, because that will make a higher straight for any ace. So... River not likely to change anything, but I probably lose in this one. And indeed I am. The upside flopping top pair against my middle pair. Again I folded to a pocket pair of his, though. Only pocket threes, so believe it or not, I was almost even with him with eight four. But that's only if I could see all the cards, where 8-4 is likely to be folded when you miss the flop. And pocket 3s are not. That's why those are so superior in heads-up limit hold'em. I'm going to 4-bet the ace-6 just because of how much 3-betting he's doing. He's 5-betting, and now I'm going to be pretty much committed to call down. Or more than call down, I'm going to raise him. He's 3-betting, so he may actually have something here. And I'm going to call this, and the river, a king. That could have made a straight for him, unfortunately. But no, it just makes him a second pair, and he was just firing at it. So this is what's weird about Yebsite, is he gets he gets these runs going, and gets ahead of me, and then just throws away chips. There is no reason to do that. No reason to do that. And I just flopped top set here. And again, I'm going to... Keep raising. Give it a pause for a second here to make him think I'm thinking about raising. Still have the nuts. He's raising me. Don't want to instantly 3-bet because I want to make it seem like I'm thinking about it. And this is going to be the big pot I've been waiting for. No f flush draw possible. I have top set. No straight possible at the moment. And here's the river. I have the nuts. 800 chip pot. Top set against two pair. So that was the type of hand I've been waiting for all afternoon. So that was for one-fifth of all the chips on the table. And I just got check raised with bottom pair. I will just call this one down. He will win with middle pair. Pocket tens. So we're going to go five bets of the pocket tens. And the flop comes, queen, nine, three. He will just drop that immediately. Despite that huge pot, I'm only up 2,300 to 1,700 because I've been struggling recently here. Another, another bottom pair for me on a draw-heavy board with two spades and queen, ten. There's no chance I drop this one. Don't love seeing the queen because that may have killed my outs, but I have to call. I will still call. Hope he had a draw. He had middle pair. He will take it. Folding a trash hand right there.
So they've actually been adjusting the line, like the sports betting style line on me and Yeb's site as the match has been going on, and they've been giving each other action based upon where the match stood at the moment, though I think it's been pretty hard to do much adjustment because there has not been all that much movement in the chip stacks here. Yep, side pocket kings and getting very little action on that. Again, that's the one area he has not been lucky, is getting very limited action on his big pairs. So I flopped a flush draw here, and I'm actually going to check raise it because this is a board he could have easily missed, king six seven. The turn, I still fire, and he folds. I was risking I would get raised and not have that good of a showdown hand, but it just looked like that. Uh, yep, site didn't have anything. I felt if he had. Uh, Ace high or some kind of pair he liked, he would have re-raised me. So he's taking a break. And I'm going to be pausing this here so I can take a break. We will be continuing the match. And currently I lead 2140 to 1860. Okay, so we're going to resume here. And I just check raised the flop with bottom pair. I seem to be getting a lot of bottom pairs and they don't seem to be working out very well. Very dry heavy board, cannot fold this. And surprised he didn't value bet that river. I lose the hand, we're back to exactly even. Unbelievable. A four bet pocket five. He's gonna five bet me. I will just call. The king was not on the board. I'd be raising. And indeed, had I raised, I would have lost more money. So I lose my flip there. And that's where I have not been getting very lucky, is that he has 5-bet a lot of potentially dominated hands and I just am not really getting anywhere with those, except for that one hand with the kings. This match seems to be going on a long time, and it doesn't just seem that way, it is. But I've played people like Yebsite many times heads up 2040, and I mean, we've won and lost $2,000 very quickly. But so far it hasn't happened here. I will call King High down here. And he had pocket fives, which will be the winner. Called the King High, he checked the turn, indicating he didn't have anything, and King High is often good in that type of spot. I'm going to four bet the King Nine, given his uh, light three betting. And I've finally flopped something. Hopefully it's good. He just called the... Now he's, he paused and bet here. That made me think he was check-raising. I'm going to raise him here. Because I don't think he has the jack. I think he's check-raising the jack there. And I was right. I, that to me looked like that he was 
betting a draw. Because he kind of like looked confused, like what do I do here? And I think if he hits the jack, then he just can't check raise me fast enough. He loves to see a jack there. But just suddenly firing out is kind of like, I don't have a jack, but I think maybe you'll fold if you've missed. And I have a draw and I have outs. That's, that's what it looked like to me. I'm actually going to call this with the over cards, given his range. A lot of times I'll fold this here. Now I'll fold. Even though I picked up a gut shot, it's just not worth calling a bigger bet on the turn. 6-9, I will fold. Three dues, I will fold. Been going over two hours. He four bets my three bet, and I've got king high with a gut shot draw. He's checking behind. I'm just going to check and let him check. And I will check and call any bet here. And he notches me with ace high against king high. Bit of a slump here. Ace ten of spades. Missed that board, but I will re-raise him if he check raises me. I think I have the best hand. I don't think he would do this with a six. I will call the four bet he makes. And I will call him down. Unbelievable. Wow. So I called it right the whole way. But he fired a bluff all the way with queen high, four bet the queen high, and got there on the river. Wow. I'm going to call this one here. Now I'm actually going to call him down with queen high. Kicker does not matter. And now, unless he has one of these two, we're going to split it. We are splitting it on the turn, no matter what. He's three betting me. I've got king high, king six. We'll take one off here. Picked up a straight draw. I'm just really having a hard time picking up any hands. And he actually wins with the 9 kicker. So I'm going to let go of that uh, queen 4 offsuit. Queen 7. Slightly above average hand on the button. Total miss on the flop. He will fold. I'll take down a small pot. I believe I'm at my low point right now, or prior to the previous hand. I'm getting 4-bet with my a7 out of position. I'm just going to check all this one down again. Here's an ace. I will actually check-raise this, but I do not get to check-raise it because he checks behind. So he 4-bet me with 6-8 and smartly checked behind on the turn. Thought I might be able to get a check-raise out of him. Ace-10, I'm going to 4-bet this here. And he's been 5-betting too much trash lately, so I am going to 6-bet this. And he's just going to call. I do hit the ace. I'm going to just 3-bet it right off the 
right off the bat here, and he's four betting, so now it's just time to call down. And a flush has hit, possibly. And this has killed any two pair he has, but uh, he had the flush. So Yepsite loves to pound draws, and it's been working for him so far here. So I have now lost almost half my chips. And I'll tell you, this is something that could easily be lost at this point if I don't start getting some better cards. It's not too hard to lose 1,150 chips at 2040 Limit Hold'em. Now, he just folded twice, which is interesting. It's like he's getting more conservative now that he's won some hands, which may make it harder for me to come back, at least in any timely fashion. But he is three-betting me here, and I've totally missed this, and I'm going to have to fold. A lot of aggressive play out of Yeb's site, and he's been hitting his hands. Now I've got Queen Ten of Hearts. I'm going to four bet that. He's going to just call. And I have only flopped a gut shot with a backdoor flush draw. He check raises me, I will call. Now I've picked up a monster draw. And total brick on the river. I'm going to have to fold it. So a straight flush draw. And I miss completely. Not even a pair. The upside three betting. I've got seven six off suit. I've missed this. I'm going to have to fold. So three betting, or sorry, he limped on the button. I raised. I was going to three bet actually. This is not a good board for a limp on the button opponent. I'm going to call him down. A lot of draws on this board. And three didn't matter. He either had me or didn't have me. He had me with a three. So now that I'm starting to get a little bit lower on chips, I may have to stop making calls like that and try to save my chips for better spots. Ace-8, which I think is the best hand pre-flop, but post-flop, I don't know. He is check-raising me. Unfortunately, I have to call down here with the many draws possible. And he gets there again with one of the draws. So the upside not missing, and I'm going to bet this with the overcard and gut shot. Can't hit anything. The upside will check behind, and I will take the down the 240 chip pot badly needed with queen high. So I have a long way to come back if I'm going to win this match.
flop middle pair, and the bottom and middle pair have just not been good recently. I'm getting raised, and I'm hoping he did not hit a king, or I'm in trouble. He did not. He only hit ace high, and I go back to 800. So I'm trying to claw back to the four digits here. Got a gut shot straight draw here. I will bet this with the open ended now, and he's raising. <laughs> and the bottom pair is the winner for him. So, I still have about a third of my chips left. Not dead yet, but definitely need some help from the deck. Now getting dealt a lot of trash. And I raised 9-6. I got 3-bet, and now I flop top 2, a rare monster flop for me. We're going to go a lot of bets on this one. Because I have the best hand other than nine sixes or fours. So, unless he had a straight draw, I'm going to win this one. I guess he could have had twos, but obviously he did not. I'm actually going to raise this with his limp, represent a bigger hand than I have. I have about an average hand, and I've flopped middle pair. I will re-raise him if he raises me here. I think a raise would indicate either a draw or a seven. If he four bets, I will just call. Don't love my hand that much, but... He's just calling the river a deuce, unlikely to mean much, and he folds. So I was right about the draw. Very likely he had that. Breaking back over a thousand. Four seven of hearts. He will fold. And uh, ace king here. He will fold to me again. So he's 3-betting. I'm not going to 4-bet Jack-7 suited. It's just not good enough. I will take one off on the flop. And now there's just too many things I'm not going to be able to fade. I was drawing to 3 outs as he shows pocket 10s. middle pair here with king five. The question is, do I four bet if he three bets me here? I will four bet him. Too many draws out there. I don't want to give him free cards. And he loves to raise draws in the flop, even mediocre draws. All right, he's five bet here. I can't go much further with this with... Uh, King five, and now he's picked up a possible flush. 
and this is just getting worse. I'm probably going to lose this hand. And wow, he went five bets with queen high and picked it up on the river. All I can say is I'm glad this match is not for real money. It's for some pride, but not for real money. He three bets now, five eight offsuit out of position, and flops two aces, and I let it go. So as you've seen, there's a lot of hands where we went a lot of bets where I only had something like middle pair, and in many cases I actually had the best hand. But uh, he's come back to win a lot of those. So I have over cards and a jack high one card flush draw. I will just call this. The question is, do I call the river if I miss? Now I hit this here. I'm actually going to raise him, thinking he does not have an ace. And he folded. The reason I thought he did not have an ace is he did not re-raise preflop. So I felt that uh, without an ace, he will not be able to re-raise me. And at worst, I'm wasting one more bet. He claims he has two pair. I don't know if that's true. I have flopped a gut shot here. Now I have picked up bottom pair. He's raising me. He's been raising me with a lot of uh, weird hands in that spot where he checks behind, but... That's what he did. I almost 3-bet him there, believe it or not. Easy to say now when I see what he had, but I really was considering that, which is why I said he's raising with a lot of weird hands in that spot, but obviously not good enough to 3-bet there with uh, all that on the board. 10-10-8 for my ace-king. I will check behind here. I don't like any of that. He's checking. I'm going to bet. He may call. He doesn't know I have a big hand. I just raised pre-flop. I could do that with anything, but he is letting it go. And I break back over a thousand. He's raising. I'm just going to call with the queen four suited. I have missed, but I'm going to try to bluff this one. He's going to call. And now I have a queen, so I've got to keep betting. If he had an ace, then I really ran myself into trouble. He did. That was a bluff gone bad where I bluffed and got there. And against a different player, I would have actually checked that queen. But with him, I had to keep betting. Ace queen, he's check raising me on a king 5 3 board. I don't think he has a king. And he does not. He's folding. That's one of those things where you think he would have waited till the turn with a very dry board like king 5-3. So when I hit the queen, it looked like the best hand, and it looks like he was just bluffing me on that one. Won't get a chance to play my jack-king spades. Here's pocket tens. He's re-raising. I'm going to 4-bet. He's going to 5-bet. I'm going to 6-bet. He's going to 7, I'm going to 8, and I will stop if he goes to 9. I will have to stop that of fearing a higher pocket pair. Now I will raise him again in case he has his king. He's re-raising me, so I will just call. This could be high pocket pair over high pocket pair. And wow, what a hit! Unless he's got a flush, I've got him. I had him the whole way, it turned out. 
720 chip pot. Didn't even need the river. He overplayed those eights. And that got me a little more healthy. Now I'm striking distance away from even again. Can you believe this match, how long it is? I'll check behind here. This looks like the type of thing he would uh, check raise me with, and I'd like to call down, so... We'll both check, and he's going to win with twos. So he definitely would have check-raised the flop. I saved money there. Pocket jacks for me here. We will get into another raising war. If he re-raises, he does. We're going to seven bets of the jacks. I'll go to nine bets. He's going to ten. I've got to stop at this point. Hard to tell with this guy sometimes. Bad flop there. Ace-queen six. It's ace-king for him. He's going to check call down. He had aces versus jacks. Bad spot. If I had the aces and he had the jacks, he would have gone a lot of bets pre-flop. Fortunately, I didn't catch a jack after he flopped that set. No point to chase the bottom gut shot. That may not even be good. Flop top pair here with queen six off suit. Also have a small flush draw. Ace has hit the turn. He's not raising, meaning he probably doesn't have one. And a bad card on the river, even though I have a diamond. I took it down, figuring that he would bet if he had a straight and no diamond. No point to bet there. Check call. I did, and I ended up winning. So that's one case where you hit your, your diamond draw, but you really don't want to. And speaking of a diamond draw, that's what I have here. I am going to raise him, and he's going to 3-bet me. I'm going to just call. He shows the tendency to just keep going a ridiculous number of bets, so no point to try to buy another free card by raising there. And I'm not going to get it. He tried to induce a bluff or a value bet. He had flopped top two with ace-king. I did not go for it. King 4, I have. He's 3-betting me. I will just call. Flopped top pair with a king kicker. So I now have picked up a king high flush draw as well. That makes a boat with the four. He check folds, meaning he had nothing. Back to a thousand. I'm just going to call the queen eight. Didn't really want to get in a raising war with it. I'm going to Attempt to bluff him. Did not work. I don't think he had an ace there, but whatever it was, there was nowhere to go.
So I think I'm going to tone down the bluffs. He seems to be trying to rebluff me, and I've already shown him I'm willing to bluff, so I'll let him think I'm going to bluff. Now this I'll bet just because I've got the straight draw. And I got him to fold. But I'll let him think I'm bluffing in the future when I actually have something. Get extra action out of him. Three betting the eight ten suited and totally miss again. So I flop something big here. Top and bottom pair, King Deuce of Hearts. He did three bet before the flop, and I just called. And unfortunately, he had nothing after showing some action on the flop. And I've just flopped top pair with... There are two jacks on the board. I'm going to check and let him try to fire at it. So I got him to call the way down with king high after the check raise on the turn. That was a good pot for an opponent with having king high. Now I've got the aces. Hoping he'd go more bets than four, but at least he went four bets with me. Flop is queen, seven, eight. And he now he's going four bets, so I'm going to go five. And he will just call. Looks like it probably didn't make his draw unless he had 5-6. And the river, another 8. Don't like to see that. His queen is no good. Pocket Aces takes down the 520 chip pot back to 1400. I will call the jack 6 will not go any further with it. Turned out I was dominated. And I probably should have folded that pre-flop. He's been very aggressive, and I just wasted uh, 50 chips. Got a free pass with my 10 deuce. Jack 3 of clubs. I have at the moment. I have to let go on the turn. So what's really been eluding me here is winning a lot of big pots off of him where he overplays. It's happened a few times, but not enough. And that will be my key to winning if I do manage to win. But so far, I've been losing the big pots. And it's been very difficult to get anywhere with that happening. He pumps up a lot of pots to being big. That increases the variance a lot of a player like this. And I'm also missing a lot of flops which allows him to force me off hands fairly often, even with... I'm going to raise him with bottom pair. He's trying to ask for another break, and I really don't feel like doing it. just want to get this match over with.
called the turn river not a good river for me I have to call it but uh, I will win it's one of those things where you don't like it with the one card flush possibility one card straight possibility but against a player like Yebsite you cannot fold I won't 5-bet the ace-9 out of position. I will have to just check all this one down. Don't love the board here, obviously. And he had his 3-outer on the flop. Not going to play 9-3 off suit. Would have been dominated. So he's 4-betting me again. This time I have ace-4 suited, again out of position. And I flop the 4. I'm going to raise him. He's going to 3-bet me. I'm not going to 4-bet this because it's bottom pair. And I knew he'd bet that, so I'm check-raising him here. He's raising me with a king. Now, does he really have ace-king is the question. I'm going to 3-bet him. He's going to 4-bet me, and I'm in trouble. So I thought he may have hit something like King-9, King-7, King-4. He had the king I didn't want to see, the pocket kings. I didn't think he had ace-king, because I thought he would have been more aggressive on the turn. Here I've picked up a big draw, but I will just call it. Didn't want to call the river, just felt there were too many things that were beating me there. Picked up a straight try here, and will not make it. I'm down to 6.30 again. Didn't want to raise that turn, because it's too much he's calling with. I picked up middle pair here. The turn. And he's raising me. A lot of draws, other things he could have picked up. I have to call the river no matter what. That may have made a draw for him. He picked up two pair on the turn. So once again, the turn is uh, starting to be a problem for me. Or not starting to be, a continuing to be. And the upside looking good to win this match now. Much as I don't want to give up, but uh, 420 chips is not very much at 2040. He's just picking up a lot of big hands. And I will need a pretty big miracle to come back and win this many bets with only this much behind. I will check and try to do a check raise here. He will not go for it. And it was a good check. It allowed him to hit the king and...
down to about a quarter of my stack. I need to uh, get conservative. I can't make as many light call downs when I'm in this spot. Because he does have the tendency to shoot off chips, and I don't want to lose what remaining chips I have um, making light call downs. Now, this will not be light call down with queens. And the flop, 9, 10, 4. He just has called, thinking I'm in pretty good shape here. The river, another 10. There's no way he has a 10. And I move up a little bit. Still a long way to go. His queen is the hand I have at the moment. I four bet him. He's going to five bet. The question is, do I want a six bet here with ace queen? I will. If he goes seven, I will just call. No, he sixes. Seven, five, five is the flop. I have picked up a heart flush draw. And a value bet the ace queen high. And he gets there with 6-4 on the river. Wow. The upside hitting everything, not even the way he was expecting. He thought that he needed a straight. So I had the overcards. He had no pair. I had a flush draw as well on the turn and couldn't get anything. Here I'm not going to 4-bet, especially with the chip stack I have. And I can't do anything with that flop. I need to save my last 300 for hopefully a good hand. So what I'm looking for now, being in this spot, is a good spot to get a lot of chips in. I don't want to try to flop bottom pair and call most of it off. Here's ace deuce. He will just call the flop 893. I'm going to check behind. I, I don't want to fold this hand, but I don't want to commit a lot of chips to it. And he picked up two pair. So, pretty much over for me. I want to congratulate Yepside just yet, but uh, it's looking pretty good for him. Though I came back from a, a spot just as bad, or maybe even worse, actually worse, in the Limit Hold'em shootout, heads up. It's never over until your final chips are over on the other guy's uh, side. He's firing out. I'm just going to call and hope for some kind of miracle card here. That's not it. So now Yepsite's uh, looking very good to win this one. Surprising he folded. I guess he's waiting for a big hand himself. I'm happy to see that, obviously, with 3-4. I would not have called that. I will get all in if I get something good, and here we are. This is going all in for sure. This could be my final stand in this one. And we're all in. Pocket sevens versus Queen King, a flip, and he's hit the king, and the match is over. Two pair for Yebsite. And as I'm typing in the chat, side equals joke even though it's my site. Very, very good run for Yeb site. And 
He did make some good moves there, did shoot off a few times, but ended up not mattering. And have to give him credit, this was a pretty deep stacked match at 100 big bets each. Not big bets, 100 big blinds each, 50 big bets. And he beat me, so obviously losing 50 big bets heads up is not unheard of, very easy to do. But uh, I will give Yepside credit for playing a good match and making some good moves and managing to beat me for 100 big bets. Took almost three hours, but he did it. So I'll be finding some way to post this, which you'll see by the time it's up. And thank you for watching, listening, or whatever you've done here. And Yepside is the winner. He has beaten me in our Heads Up match. Congratulations, Yepsite. This is PokerFraudAlert.com. Todd Dandruff Wittellis. Going to lick my wounds. Good day.